the fun. Time now for sports news on the news at 10 with Olumide Macaulay. Thank you, Gimba. Thank you for staying with us on Sports News. Reigning Nigeria Professional Football League champions, Lobby Stars of Makredi, earlier this evening, beat Cameroon top flight side UMS Tulum 2-0 in their return leg qualification match for the 2019 CAF Champions League. Lobby Stars had suffered a 1-0 defeat away in Cameroon when the two sides met in the first leg. The second match between the, uh, was moved to the Nandesi Kwe Stadium, in Enugu, instead of the home ground of the NPFL champions in Makredi, Sikiru Alami and Yaya Kone's penalty gave the home side the vital goals. Lobby Stars advanced to the next round of qualifications 2-1 in aggregate and will face Kenya's Gormahia in the next round. Meanwhile, Nigeria's sole CAF Confederation Cup representative, Enugu Rangers, have advanced to the next round of the continental competition. The ITO Federation Cup champions this evening beat Ethiopian side Defence Force Soccer Club 3-1 away from home in their return leg clash. Enugu Rangers had won the first leg 2-0 at the Nandazi Kwe Stadium on November the 28th. Bright Selas, Godwin Nakuda and Kelvin Itoya got the vital away goals for the Rangers. The result means that Enugu Rangers progressed to the next round with a 5-1 aggregate and will face Algeria's USM Bell Abyss. Finally, in the English Premier League, we bring you results of match day 15. Games have just been played and are continuing across England. At the Turf Moor, Liverpool came from a goal down to beat Burnley 3-1 to keep pressure on Manchester City at the top of the EPL log. Everton and Newcastle United settled for a 1-0 draw at Goodison Park, while Leicester City forced Fulham to a 1-0 draw at Craven Cottage. At the Molina Stadium, Wolverhampton Wanderers came back from a goal down to beat Chelsea 2-1. Manchester United and Arsenal played a 2-0 draw at Old Trafford, while Tottenham defeated Southampton 3-0 at the Wembley Stadium. That's it on Sports News. The News at 10 continues shortly. Leaders around the world have attended the funeral of the late U.S. President George H.W. Bush in Washington. The 41st U.S. President died last week at the age of 94 after a life of service as a World War II hero, head of the CIA and wartime president. The moment began with a motorcade from the U.S. Capitol to the National Cathedral, where the funeral was to be held. The former president was accorded all aspects of state paraphernalia, just as if he was still president. Inside the cathedral were world leaders, friends and family, including three other former presidents, Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama and their spouses, with current U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump. They were later greeted by former President George W. Bush, who handed former First Lady Michelle Obama a small item. The service was presided by Bishop Michael Curry, who had incidentally presided over the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle back in May. Then the tributes began from former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and former Senator and close friend Alan Simpson. Hatred, loyalty to his country, loyalty to his family, loyalty to his friends, loyal to the, the institutions of government and always, always, always a friend to his friends. Former President George W. Bush choked up while delivering the final eulogy, describing the 41st president as close to perfect. He was a genuinely optimistic man, and that optimism guided his children and made each of us believe that anything was possible. He valued character over pedigree, 
and he was no cynic. He looked for the good in each person, and he usually found it. Dad taught us that public service is noble and necessary, that one can serve with integrity and hold true to the important values like faith and family. After the funeral, the late president's body's flown to Texas, where it will lie in public repose until Thursday morning for a second service before the Bush 4141, a train named in honor of the former president to take the body to its final resting place at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library beside his wife, the late Barbara Bush. A presidential honor to be remembered for a long time. And the main news again. Gunmen today stormed Oshun State College of Technology, SOK, where they killed a lecturer and also adopted five others. But the Oshun State Police says that calm has been restored to the area. Also today, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, rejected a proposed police amendment bill which empowers the National Assembly to confirm appointments of the Inspector General of Police. And tributes have poured in for America's 41st President, George Walker Bush, as he is remembered at the National Cathedral Funeral. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. I am Gimba Umar. Have a splendid night, guys. Good night.